Now, let's see here. We've got our trigger rod installed. This is kind of hard to see, but I've got one going through there. And I've got my LPR set up. And let's see. Oh, that's safety on. Okay. Now this, I got really lucky. Um, a lot of times the trigger rod is just a little bit too long. And like if this, if it was leaking right off the bat, if I pull down on the on the valve here, it makes this a little bit too sh too short. But if I, I'm just pushing the valve just a little bit. So now with the safety on, I can't um, can't get it to hiss. Safety off. There we go. I think I'm pretty happy with that. Now you think that we're done here. Um, and well, we almost are. But um, the problem that we've got right now is that if I pull the trigger, look how far the trigger can go before it bounces back. And I only really need to go that far to actually engage the piston. I don't need it to go that far. So what we're gonna do is install a trigger stop. Um, we're gonna take out the trigger and we're gonna use all the skills that we've already learned. We're gonna use a center punch and we're gonna put a little nick in the trigger right around, you know, probably right around there. Okay, so that it's gonna be below our trigger rod or in your case, it might be above. But if we're just gonna put one little screw there, we're gonna drill through the trigger, we're gonna tap the hole, and then we're gonna add an extra screw, and that will allow us to limit the amount of trigger travel, okay? Okay, so our trigger is all set. This is one of the trickier things. You really gotta be careful, because if you drill this hole off-center, you could in theory, weaken the structure of the trigger. So you really want to take your time, make sure it's in the center. Um, and that's, that's, that's pretty good. Anyway, and make sure that you uh, use some sandpaper or something to make sure that this is nice and smooth because you're going to be tapping this with your finger all the time and you don't want anything sharp there. Okay. Now you should have, if you bought your new mag kits from the right place. You should have a screw in there. There's no way this is going to focus on here. Come on. There you go. This one has a little nylon tip on it, and that's the one we want to use. You don't have to use this one, obviously, but uh, I don't know. It looks cool. Oh, and we need to add some Loctite to this first, because otherwise it's really going to just kind of move around a lot. So let me grab my Loctite here. I'll put just just a dab. Oops. All right. So let's get this back in the trigger, and then we'll do some fine tuning. All right. Now everything's back together. Let's. Uh, Air this up here. Again, when the safety is installed, nothing hisses, nothing moves. Safety off. Okay, so we're going to move this set screw in a little bit. This is going to take a. I'm going to drop the thing a lot. Okay, now you can't go in too far. It's probably... Oh, there we go. See, I've gone too far. Now the piston isn't moving when I try to pull the trigger. So let's back that out just a little bit. 
another half turn or so. There we go. See now the trigger, I mean that's that's moving about a third as far as it was before. Okay. And that works a lot better. Nice and fun. Okay. Finally, there are two last little things we got to worry about. And I actually need to clear off some space here. Um, we need to install a trigger return force of some sort. And then we need to in install a sear reset access thing. I'm not sure what to call it. Um, so the Fabco MSV2 doesn't have a whole lot of um, return force on it. It's pretty light. And so once you pull the trigger, it doesn't want to really push back on its own, okay? Um, now, normally, I mean, if you're just shooting a new mag, if you're just tap firing, it's not really a big deal. Um, but if you're trying to walk it, this, it, it really makes a difference um, because it's just, it's resetting just a little bit slower then your fingers can probably walk. So you need to provide some kind of um, some kind of return force to help the trigger move back more quickly. There's a couple of different ways that you can do this. Um, the easiest way is to take a spring of some sort. Um, let me grab, got a whole box of different springs here. Um, so like this spring here, that I can't grab. Come on. Little dork. Okay. This is a... Um, this just came out of a ballpoint pen. Okay, it's very light. It's very small. And what I could do is I could take this and I could put it inside. Obviously, I'd put it inside of the, uh, the bracket there. And then I would cut it short. I would cut it about there with my pliers. Um, I would glue this side inside of the uh, inside of the bracket, and that would work. That would be one way to do it, and that would provide a little bit of more um, return force. Okay, that's really easy. It's really simple. Everyone's got an old ballpoint pen laying around that's dead, and just take out the spring, cut it, and if you mess up the one side, then you can you know flip it around and use the other side. The other thing that you can do is. You can buy, when you're buying your new mag kit, you can buy a magnetic return uh, kit. And this works a little bit differently. You have to mount this part to the MSV2 somehow. And I don't, the only reason I don't like these is because I don't know where I would mount it on here. You're supposed to kind of mount it where the hole is, but then, you know, for my purposes, this wouldn't really work. But if you're mounting the MSV a lot lower, you could probably get this on here. I could probably still, if I had the air ports coming out the bottom, um, I could probably put it on here and just kind of glue it on. Again, the forces that you're using, they're not that heavy. Um, you know, you're just kind of tapping this and you're not even going as far as that, because I've installed the trigger stop, I really can't go as far as the trigger could go. And I'm not putting a whole lot of force on the lever. Um, so you would install this on there and then you would jam this part, you would jam it inside of the lever, maybe add a little bit of super glue, it fits in there really nice. And then by adjusting the little screw here, you could adjust the sensitivity of how strong the magnet repels. This has, they're set up so that it's north to north or south to south, I'm not sure which one it is. But um, the magnets can't, gosh, they can't touch. So I've had this on other new mags, it works really well. It's definitely worth, the, I think it's 10 bucks to get one of these. Um, and they're very cool and they're very nice. Or what I've done is I've actually, you're not gonna be able to see this, um, but I've drilled out a little bit of the top of the trigger and I've taken a rare earth magnet and jammed it in there. And then I drilled a little hole in the top and put in a steel set screw and that provides a magnetic return force. Um, so there's lots of different ways that you can do it, but you need to have some kind of return force on the lever of the valve if you really want to have a quick pneumatic trigger. Lastly, we need to install some kind of um, some kind of sear reset 
thing here. Um, this is going to be a little bit hard to show you, but when your automag is installed, when it's all put together here, okay. All right, and you've gassed up the marker. This little, again, this is going to be hard to see, but when you gas up the valve, the little on off pin pops out, okay? And it's really hard to see, but this actually pops out about a quarter of an inch. And then when you pull the trigger, you know, you're pulling the trigger, you're moving the sear, and this part of the sear, this part of the sear moves down to release the bolt. This part of the sear pushes up on that on off pin and then fires the valve, okay? And then when you let go of the trigger, the whole thing resets and this pin sticks out again, okay? Then if you degas your marker when the trigger is released, that pin is always, it's gonna be still out. It's not gonna recess on its own. Um, with a nor normal auto mag, all you have to do is pull the trigger, that pushes in the pin, and then you can pull out the valve, okay? But with a new mag, since air is powering the trigger, if there's no air in the gun, when you pull back the trigger, nothing happens, okay? If I pull back the trigger with no air, you know, the piston isn't gonna move, obviously. Um, so what this means is that if you don't have some kind of sear reset, you can't take out the valve. So, you know, if you need to clean out your gun or if you need to change an O-ring or something, you can't take out, off your valve without actually disassembling the entire marker and pushing in that pin manually. Okay. So what we're going to do, um, you could, you could skip this step. Um, I actually, my very first new mag, I, I totally, I didn't realize this and I've never gotten around to drilling another hole and what I've learned to do is I just I hold down the trigger as I degas the marker okay but that took me about three years to to learn how to do that um so you probably want to skip that if you can what you can do instead is we're gonna drill we're gonna drill one last hole since the sear kind of sits here okay let's get right there we're gonna drill one last hole right here in the frame, okay? And what that means is that if we drill a little hole there, just big enough for, you know, an Allen key or something, then we can push up from the bottom and manually press in the sear and release that pin and get the valve out, okay? The hole doesn't have to be very big. Um, we can probably use, uh, what's the one down from a 1 8th? Uh, you know, a 7 64th, we can probably use that. You just wanna make sure that you do it, um, you know, in far enough because the sear, let's see here, the sear, the sear comes back to, to there. So the sear comes only, the sear only comes back to about that spot. Okay. We can't push it. We can't drill the hole right up to the edge. We obviously can't drill it there. We have to drill it about there. Okay. Once we have that done, then we are ready to put this together and start some testing.